Morning! Here we are, a Saturday on the river. The rain is quite heavy today, which is a bit pants, but not much I can do about the rain. Four rods in. Let's go and put the kettle on and uh, see how today rolls, shall we? There's the rods in and the two different jetties. It is uh, a bit sheltered here because I've got some trees in the bank here. But standing out in the jetty, yeah, it's just a bit, uh, a bit breezy, a bit windy. Hiding in behind the van today because it's a bit windy. It's unusual to fish the river today. I'm fishing the river for a change, you know. Normally the river flow is uh, going that way towards the skillin, but the wind is going that way. So it's weird. You cast out, and the, the line gets bowed out up the river to get washed back. Anyway, I've four rods in. I'm about to go and juice them up, get some scent in the water, uh, and a cup of coffee, which is good. The responsible adult today is Mr. Uh, Mr. Briars. He's a good angler. He okay has some faults, like he supports a shit football team, but you know. Well that will not ignore all that. He's a Liverpool fan. Could be worse. I could have a man new fan out with me. But it's all good. The weather forecast today says long, heavy gusts of wind followed by rain. So hence why I'm using the van as something to uh shield you guys it's it's a weird one the water if you if you put your hand in the water it's that the water's actually really cold so it's a strange one that the water is so cold but it's like it's like 10 degrees out here today so it's a warm day but the water is cold I've, I've seen some photographs coming through from guys that I know that are you know decent anglers and they're showing jacks with a very obvious spawning damage. So, first week in February and the pike are beginning to spawn. I've never heard of this in my life, but it's spawning damage when you're catching jacks that have been shredded. You know, any of the doubles that I've caught this year so far, they've all been very kind of hollow. The ones last weekend, it was a fat fish, it was a well figured out fish. But, you know, that fish should be in that condition from about October and only get heavier right through to about the end of uh, March, start of April. But, fuck knows. Fuck knows. I'm out again tomorrow. I'm out with Mr. H tomorrow, so. It's a two day fishing weekender. Thought I'd give the river a try. I haven't fished the river all winter. So I'm down here above Balnalek, throwing in some bait here. I'm just about to go and juice up the baits with some uh, some oils. And then I get them cast back ready again. I might even pop up the big trout. I have a, I have a big trout on. I have an eel head, a whole mackerel, a bluey and a big brown trout. I'm thinking I might go and pop up the brown trout. I've got some maggots with me if I wanted to kind of put a float through it to try and get some roach or something but with this wind it's, uh, it's a bit brutal. I'm sitting watching you know white horses go up the river which is a bit weird. <laughs> so apart from that it's not been a bad session so far. Still no fish. But, you know, hey ho, what's happening this week in the news? Oh, that's right, Canadian truckers, we salute you, definitely salute you. 
you keep the honking going in Canada. Basically, the, uh, for those that don't know, the Canadian truck drivers and farmers and working class types in Canada basically said that we've had enough of the whole uh, woo flu shit. We've had enough of having to show our papers everywhere we go. So, I think it's just shy of 100,000 truck drivers drove their trucks into Ottawa and just blockaded the city. And every time, you know, a metropolitan, you know, soft socialist kind of goes up to them and says, you know, uh, can you please move, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're just like, nope, honk. So, it's, uh, it's good when people at the bottom decide they've had enough and the people at the top who think they're in control realize very quickly that they don't have any control. 20 minutes later. Holy shit. This is a massive gust of wind come through. Through the rod pod. Clean off the jetty. Send the rods into the reeds here beside me. Around here so you can see it. I've had to break out the big guns. I've had to add the screw feet to the pod to stop it <laughs> Fuck me! Pounder. Yeah. Twenty two pounder from the river, that's a nice fish. That's a bit of a turn off the books. Just had a twenty two pound uh, river pike from the River Learn. Nice fat thick fish. Um so yeah, not a blank. 
two hours later. How's about today? Well, let me just uh, set you down here because today was rough. Today was, uh, let me just set you guys down. Today was a bit brutal. Let me just try and get you up straight again. Today was a bit rough. The wind was rough. The rain was fucking horrible. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. At one point, my rod pod got blown clean off the jetty, which sent the two rods on it into the river. So I had to kind of fish out the rods that were in the river, which was a bit shit. And in the process of having the rods fly off the rod pod in a big gust of wind into the river, I, I don't know if you can see that. A little bit there. The lip of the spool has been uh, dented off the wooden jetty. Now, this, you don't leave it jaggy because it will uh, catch your braid and it will inevitably ruin your braid. So what you do, to fix it, you get yourself a file. I have a Leatherman. Anyone that knows these Leathermans knows they have like a little file. One's a smooth side, one's a rough side. Don't use the rough side. Use the smooth side. Go smooth. Like you're with your woman. Smooth. Smooth. You see, and already that little rub of that there has taken that down so that the nail barely catches on it. And it catches on that little divot there because that's quite a deep divot. But what we're going to do, and what we're going to go, we're going to go smooth. Just gonna take out that that little rough edge there. Until you can't feel it with your finger. Because we go smooth. That means that when the line goes off it and off it, there is no way for that line to catch on that rough bit. I'm just going to drag it over that rough bit here. And there is no damage to that braid. If the worst comes to the worst, say that it was like a big bloody chunk out of this. And, you know, going smooth with the Leatherman didn't really work. Well then, you buy a new one of these. You can get aftermarket ones, they're about 20 quid. Or you can buy a Shimano branded one, it's about 30 quid. Sucks that you're going to have to spend £30. Shit happens. Just have to suck it up and deal with it. But there we go, there we have it. How to fix your damaged spools. Now, this rod was actually the rod that had that decent fish to do and it needs a good clean because it is stinking with stuff let's go put my, my reel back on the reel or the spool back on my reel I'm going to wind up my slack 
good, nice and strong. I'm gonna put my cap back on. Pull my bit alarm. Unwind tight again. Now, that rod is now back, ready for rocking and rolling tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm back out again. <sighs> the weather forecast gives more of the same. So that means I'm going to be uh, a bit wet again. But it's okay. Skin is waterproof. So let's see what tomorrow brings, eh?